Hi, in this video we will cover tracking motion and uh, perspective in Mocha. So let's get started. For this, I have shot a short video on my desk. So I'm gonna bring it in as composition. Please notice the composition settings, 1920 by 1080, and it's about seven seconds. Out of these seven seconds, I am going to, I'm only gonna use about five seconds. So let me change the settings on my composition so that I start my time count at zero. And I'm gonna scrub all the way to about two and a half seconds, and then I'm gonna use about four seconds worth of this, or three seconds. So I will trim the, the layer all the way to about four, 14, that's about two seconds. Let's make, let's do it three seconds. So uh, let's make it three seconds, then I'm just gonna trim it to this, and I'm gonna trim the composition. So with that done, I'm only going to track that portion of the footage. The goal is to replace that book cover with this image. That's the goal. So in order to do that, we would we could potentially use um, our tracking settings here and try to figure out how to track with motion track and, and trying to distort as we go. But that could be a lengthy process. Because of this, there's a program that shifts together with After Effects called Mocha. It's by a company called Boris Effects. In the past, Bo uh, Mocha used to be a completely separate program and the workflow it was very similar to the one we have with Cinema 4D today, which is you have to go to a separate program, save the file, come back, and things get updated. Uh, with the newest version of Mocha in, in After Effects, it's a seamless workflow. So it comes in as a filter, even though it is still a separate pro uh, program, it's, still, it's treated as a filter inside After Effects. And what that means for you is a, a seamless workflow uh, for your compositions. So to do this, what we want to do is select the layer that we want to track. And like I said, we want to track the cover of that book. So we'll go ahead and go into Effects, Boris Effects, Mocha, Mocha AE. Now that applies the filter to the layer, but nothing happens. For you to actually start tracking, you need to click on that logo. And once you click on that, the Mocha program will open. Now it's a daunting interface at first, but it's actually a fairly simple interface. The key, thing here, uh, the key things here are to figure out what you want to track, give it a, enough of a margin of error, and make sure that you uh, understand what plane you're tracking. Now this might look like 3D tracking, but it's not, it's 2D tracking. And it uses a combination of transformation, meaning position, rotation, and scale, and uh, something called corner pin. Corner pin is a, uh, a filter that allows you to modify, almost like bend your layers in After Effects. So it combines all of those things into one single filter while tracking, and it allows you to save that data as tracking data. So for this, I want to go ahead and make sure that my time marker is either at the beginning or at the end. Actually, that doesn't matter because you can always track backward or forward. And what you want to do is you want to go up here to create a rectangular spline or you want to draw your own spline. Now, a spline is basically an area that you want to track. In my case, I want to track the, that book cover. Now you can fine tune this by clicking on the edges on the corners, sorry, on the corner handles, and sort of define the area that you want Mocha to be paying attention to. And that is by moving those handles. Now you see these little, what looks like Bezier handles sticking out of the, of the corners? Well, that's what they do. They actually allow you to zoom in, to push in or push out to bend the curvature of that corner if you need it. Uh, if you, you can, you don't necessarily have to create a rectangle. You have other options under that, or you could create, like I said, by hand, you could create with a pen tool. You can actually draw this thing as well. So with that done, let me go ahead and fine tune this. This is where most people using Mocha make the biggest mistake, which is they say, okay, I got it covered and it's got a pretty good margin of error. So I'm good. In reality, this is your actual margin of error. That's the area that you're telling the program, please focus in this area to track. What really gets tracked is what's inside this blue box. So you can actually show the surface point or over here. Either one of the two will get you to the same place. What you want is for this blue box 
to cover the area that you want to actually track where your footage is going to go or whatever it is that you're replacing this with. So you want to make sure that this box actually covers the area that you are actually trying to track that you actually want to replace. In my case is the front cover of the book and I'm not going to go for exact right here because there's some curvature up here and all that but this will give you a very good idea of what the powerful the power of this tool how powerful this tool is to create motion tracking. So with that done I am going to simply set it up this way and I am going to uh, go ahead and let the program analyze the footage. I'm going to select perspective. Notice that you can select either transformation only, transformation and scale, transformation and rotation. You can select skew and you select perspective as well uh, if you want to, if you need it. Now you noticed when I was scrubbing the video earlier that my book sort of changes perspective because I am pulling back almost like, a, like I am trucking my camera and so the perspective of my book changes with respect to the position of my camera and because of that I want to have perspective as well. Now to, to, uh, to track this what all you need to do now is simply click either you're tracking backward or forward. In this case since my playback head is at the beginning of the timeline I'm going to be tracking forward and all you do is just simply click and let the program do its thing. Now this can take a, a, a bit of time depending on the length and the difficulty of the tracking um, footage, what, the, how difficult it is. It works obviously best just like with any of the other trackers when you have the most amount of um, uh, color difference or uh, brightness and darkness contrast, the highest contrast possible. You'll notice also that uh, as you go, things might change and they might change position. You can at any time stop the track and then bring it back slightly to the point where you start losing tracking. Then simply move your margin of error ever so slightly to create a keyframe on your timeline and then fine tune the position of your blue box. Now you want to do two things after you do this you want to make sure that, every, that the change that you made is actually going to be interpolated to the previous keyframe which is this one so you just need to literally just simply scrub that timeline to make sure that everything is kosher and once you're okay with that then go ahead and continue from that point on on the tracking. The program will remember that that was the last setting and it's basically allowing you to keyframe the, the uh, shape of your tracker to um, and modify it as you go to best fit the footage as you go. So I'm just going to simply let it all the way through this time and uh, as you see it's doing a fairly good job of uh, at tracking. Now I know that my shape is not rectangular and that I might get some spaces here that not, might not be tracking appropriately but for the intents and purposes of this video this will work just fine. Now you don't have to have a rectangular shape like I said earlier so this could track any shape because it allows you to draw your own shapes. It could be any shape so any footage that you want to try to track 3D elements from uh, or any object with any you can actually draw almost like drawing a mask around that object. So now this got offset a little bit but like I said that would be fine. You know now that you can stop it at any time and go back, go back and fine tune the, the track. With this done, what I want to do is click on this button here to save it. So I want to make sure that that data is saved within my uh, layer and then I'll just close Mocha. Now I come back here and I don't see much difference. Th that is because Mocha still retains that information, the tracking data information. I need to bring that tracking data from Mocha into my layer. And to do so, make sure that you uncollapse the tracking data and then you will click on the create track data. Clicking on that brings up this window that tells you which layer are you tracking. When we created that tracking data in Mocha, we applied it as soon as you clicked on that shape to, to, to actually set up the blue box and the, um, the, the red box that was outside it, outside it that creates this layer. That is the tracking layer. If you uh, want to go back to Mocha and see what that is, if you click it open, you'll see that that's the layer one and that's the information that contains this margin of error and the blue box that's inside it. So that information is saved into that box. Let me close this again. And what, what I want to do is go ahead and 
place the tracking data into that by clicking in this button. Now with that done, what happens is all that data comes to my composition as keyframes. So let me go ahead and click on that, select layer one and click OK. And you'll notice that I get keyframes over here. And if I double click my U key on the keyboard, you'll see that I have keyframes for all this information. All that information is transformation information, as you can see, rotation, scale, and, and all that, and these things up here, which are my corner pin pieces of information. Now, what I want to do is I want to apply this to a layer. So I want to move that information from the tracking data to actually functional data. Let's go back to the project and bring in that image. Now, you'll notice that that image is way off size from my composition. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that whatever I brought in matches the size of my composition. So I know that my composition is 1920 by 1080. This should be 1920 by 1080. Now, obviously, it's not 1920 by 1080. It's 660 by 1225. So one way to make that layer 1920 by 1080 is by precomposing it. So I'll precompose it, and then to make sure that it matches 1920 by 1080, I, I'll click on Move All Attributes into New Composition, even though that doesn't have any filters and it doesn't have any changes done onto it. Just simply clicking on this will resize that composite, the new composition to 1920 by 1080 to match my current composition. So I'll go ahead and click OK on that. And if I double click it, you'll notice that there is my image in my new composition. And if I press Control K or Command K on the Mac, you'll notice that my composition is 1920 by 1080. Now, the point is to make that artwork match the size of my composition. That's a fairly simple process, just like what we've done in Photoshop and Illustrator and over here. You can right click on any piece of art and go transform and say fit to comp. Now that is stretches my image and it doesn't look anything like the original image. And that's okay. That's what we want. That's where the corner pin comes in. Corner pin is hoping that I do this so that it resizes accordingly to place within the tracking information. And so let me go back to my original composition. You see that my pre-composition now is all stretched out. I want to go back to my footage, the one that I tracked, go back to effect controls. And now what I want to do is export this information, the tracking information onto a layer. Now I have options. I can either export corner pin, I can export corner pin with supported motion blur, or I can export transform. Transformation is rotation, scale, and position. If, you're, if you included skewing or if you included perspective, you need to use one of the corner pin options. 99% of the time when I'm using Mocha, I export with corner pin support motion blur. So I will go ahead and select that, and I am going to tell it what layer to export it to, the pre-composition, the pre-composed uh, pre uh, painting. So I'll click on that one, and then I'll say Apply Export. So doing that places my image, and you see that it came back to the regular size it was, and you notice that the corners have these little handles. Those are my corner pin handles. Let me select the pre-composition, and you see that I now have a filter applied to a cold corner pin. If I press the U key, you will notice that all my pins have information, all my corner pins, and all that transformation information from the tracker got moved onto this layer as well. So now when I scrub this, my book has been replaced by the painting. Okay. Let me go ahead and play that back. And you'll notice that I have a fairly decent track. Now, with that done, let me go ahead and apply. I see that I see the reflection of the book at the bottom of the of this. So for this, what we want to use is um, we want to create a reflection. Now, there are many ways of creating a reflection. You can go ahead and try to, re, uh, you know, using the same tracking data, try to turn the whole thing around and use the pin, uh, the corner pin to reset to, to fix the other one. But that's a, a, a very long workflow. What I want to do is utilize a filter. And this filter is a free filter that is offered by a company called Video Copilot. They offer a lot of good stuff, including Element 3D, which allows you to create native 3D elements within After Effects. And it allows you to control with interaction with lights and everything else inside After Effects. Um, they, they, have, they have a ton of data. So videocopilot.net is a, a website to visit. And uh, they also have a lot of tutorials. 
Now I want to go into my filters and look for VC Reflect. VC Reflect is a filter that allows me to create a quick reflection. It tells me where do you want the reflection to go? Where's the floor position? So my floor position is right here. You'll notice that this comes kind of sideways. So what I want is I want to rotate this. So I want to make sure that I rotate it under the skew. Whoops, sorry, not that one. Rotation first. So let me rotate it and I'm going to rotate it to about negative, uh, negative 30, let's say a little bit more negative 31, 33, probably negative 34. A little too much, negative 33, I was right at the beginning. Okay, negative 33, negative 32, that's good. All right, and the, I can always move that back up to get it closer to the, paint, to the actual painting. And I want to skew this ever so slightly. So let me skew it to about negative 30, a bit more, negative 32 to match, perhaps, okay. And let me set keyframes for that and for my reflection angle. Then I'll go ahead and go about halfway through my composition and I see that this got moved ever so slightly. So let's go ahead and move it back to about negative 24, that is. And then my skew, let's try to match it, negative 24. That looks pretty good. And let's go ahead and go to the end and bring it back again. Bring my rotation back, not too much. Negative 19, perhaps, negative 20. Too much. Negative 19.5. Negative 18, then. A bit too much, so 18.5. Negative 18.5. <laughs> and my skew goes to negative 18.5 as well. So that should match. Now I see that that's a bit off, and that might be just because of too much skew, and I'm going to go to 19. And this might be a bit jumpy, but it gives you a pretty good idea that you can actually go in and start working with reflections. Um, I am going to increase the blur amount on this to about three so that my reflection is blurred. And then I want to bring down the offset on this, the fall off, sorry, so that it starts disappearing, that it blends. And uh, let's see, now it's too much on the offset. So you can start playing around with the settings to change the blurriness and how much offset you want on that. You can also change the opacity if you want to, if you're feeling that it's too sharp. Um, and then when I play this back, then I should get a fairly good reflection. Once again, it's called VC Reflect and it's by Video Copilot and it's a free download. So if you go to the Video Copilot website, then you will get a free, you can download it for free. Now I see that I have my um, floor positions changing as well. So what I want to do is I want to go back to the very beginning and capture that, make sure that I have a keyframe for that. Go to the end, bring that ever so slightly down, not too big, too much. Maybe I want to skew it a little bit more on that last keyframe and perhaps I want to rotate it even more. Not too much. So you know you get you can just go ahead and play around with this until you find a happy medium for the things. And that should give you fairly good results. For a free filter, it's a great results if you ask me. And I hope that this clarifies how to use track uh, Mocha for tracking. Again, it's another option besides the trackers that come standard with After Effects. It does not replace the 3D tracker, but it does match the motion tracker. So I find myself in my workflows matching, uh, using all three of them um, because like I've been saying throughout the class, it's not a one bullet solution. We need to uh, basically make use of all the tools.